So here I am on ChatGPT. I am going to copy paste my Python code here. But before I do that, let me prompt my generative AI. Let me ask it to fix this code. And then I'm going to press Shift Enter so that I can paste more things. And since I have already copied my Python code, I will simply paste it in here. Now, before I press Enter, I want to warn you about something. Here, I have given the prompt as simply fix this code. If my AI is able to produce a response to this, I would not be sure if it has fixed all the errors. It would be much better if I could first identify locations in the code where I know there is an error. And rather than simply say fix this code, I should point out to those particular lines and ask the AI to fix those particular lines only. This would give me a little bit more control. But I'm showing you this demo because in this particular case, I fully expect ChatGPT to be able to correctly fix this code. Why am I so confident? Well, these concepts that this code is talking about, body mass index and so forth, are well known. And there are lots of programs, including programs written by beginners like us, that uh, correctly work with these concepts. So I fully expect ChatGPT to have been trained on correct versions of this code and it should be able to identify the error. When we progress to more advanced programs where we cannot be sure that ChatGPT has seen the correct solutions, this style of prompting is quite dangerous. We have to be much more focused, much more deliberate about how we prompt our generative AI to work. So I'm going to show you this and we will see that ChatGPT succeeds, but from that we must not conclude that this prompt fix the code is going to work. If this prompt was always going to work, then you and me would have no role going forward to actually debug code, whereas as we shall see, humans will continue to play a very important role in correcting uh, code, including AI-generated code, although in this case, the code is not AI-generated. So let me ask ChatGPT. So it will think about this, and it says that it looks like you want to calculate the body mass index and the basal metabolic rate and so on. There are a few issues with the formulations. The formula used correctly calculates BMI, but misplaces the order of operations. So let us pay close attention to what error it has found. It says we should be doing weight divided by height square, and then multiply that by 703. So you should enclose the height square in parentheses. So let us see what we have done we have done weight divided by height square times 703. So the AI is suggesting that we should put this inside parentheses. Why? Because of order of precedence. Now if we're not sure if this formulation is correct with respect to the formula that was given, it's always a good idea to put extra parentheses just to be Sure. So what ChatGPT is suggesting here by putting parentheses is a good idea to improve the readability of the code and it also might be necessary, that is what ChatGPT is saying here, it also might be necessary depending on the order of precedence. So this would require us to look up the order of precedence just to be sure if what ChatGPT is pointing out is indeed a mistake or is merely a good suggestion, a suggestion that we should anyway take. Then it says for the uh, uh, basal metabolic rate, the formula seems to be only for males. 
So once again, it turns out if we read the uh, Wikipedia article, which for now I'm taking as a reliable source, it turns out there is a formula, but it uses a term, uh, an extra term S, where S is plus 5 for males and minus 161 for females. So when we look at our code, our code uses plus 5. So ChatGPT is correctly pointing out that this formula only works for males and there is nowhere that has been mentioned that this code is only supposed to work for males. So it is suggesting that there should also be a second formula uh, for uh, women. Right? Mm -hmm. Notice also that while ChatGPT is explaining these things, it is using variable names like weight and height and age which are different to the variable names that we used. In this code, the variable names were rather poor. A for age, W for weight and H for height. Now, of course, you could argue, as we did earlier, that I know what A means and I know what W means. But surely we can all agree that these are better variable names. So, not only is ChatGPT trying to fix logical errors in our code. You can see that it is also suggesting better code style. And this is a useful way in which beginners like us can use generative AI to improve our programming skills. Continuing with this formula, it says the formula doesn't account for the patient's gender or age. Once again, it turns out the ideal body weight has a slightly different formula depending on the um, uh, gender. Now, apart from this issue about not handling gender correctly, there is another problem with the Python code that was given to us. And this is something that the generative AI solution is fixing, but it is not explicitly making this clear. Let me point out that error. You notice here that in the formula that ChatGPT has used, it has said 50 plus 0 0.9 times height minus 152 in parentheses. And what does that mean? We will first subtract 152 from the height and only then will we multiply it with 0 0.9. Now, if you go and look at a reliable source, in this case, if you look at Wikipedia, you will find that that is the correct thing to do. Once again, no surprises that ChatGPT has repeated the, its memorized formula for uh, ideal body weight. On the other hand, if you look at what the code does, the code does 0 0.9 times height and then subtracts 152. So because of the order of precedence, this will calculate the ideal body weight incorrectly. So ChatGPT has correctly um, uh, given us the formula, but it has failed to clarify for us that our code actually was incorrect. So it's important to read the suggestions carefully. Sometimes for contexts that ChatGPT is less familiar with or completely unfamiliar with, it can produce incorrect code. It could have been that our way of writing the formula was actually correct, although that is not the case here. 